This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. I'm Greg Graziani, and I've always been fascinated by reptiles tiniest fragile little creatures to the enormous deadly apex predators and everything in between. Follow me into my wild backyard of Florida on a journey of exploration, conservation, and education to understand more about these magnificent animals. I'm always looking for ways to help preserve the wildlife around me. So in this episode of the Python Hunter, I'm going to relocate a scarlet snake that was rescued from a land development project and see what we can do to make the environment safer for the state and federally protected gopher tortoise. Check it out. It's time for the Python Hunter question of the week. Which of the three tricolored snakes in Florida gets the largest? A the scarlet king snake, B, the Florida scarlet snake, or C, the eastern coral snake? Go ahead and post your answer in the comment section down below and stay tuned for the answer later on in the show. We had a scarlet snake dropped off by a friend of mine that works heavy equipment, was pushing over some, some palmettos and stuff, doing a job, and I'm um, Floored that he actually brought me this snake because most people see it, think coral snake, and kill him. So we're headed out to a really remote location, and we're going to take this snake. We've got to get through a swamp here, but we're going to get to some dry ground and take this snake out to a location where he can live out the rest of his life. Look at that, some wild turkeys right over there. That's cool. Uh, we're gonna have to kick it in four wheel drive here, get through this marsh and get to some high ground where we've got some more palmettos and pine trees, the type of area that this snake loves. So hang on, because it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Now we're getting into the right habitat here. Let's go uh, find this guy a new home. You know, it probably doesn't matter as much as I think it does, but to me, I spend a lot of time looking for the perfect location to release each one of these animals that we go ahead and release. This right here is a really good location to release this snake. They like dry areas, so although we came through a lot of marsh to get here, we're in a higher dry area. Pine trees, palmettos, cabbage palms. Cabbage palms will take it a little damper, but the good thing is there's a pine tree right here. And with all of these pine needles all in this tree, I mean, the lizard population here is excellent. This is a, an excellent place to let this snake go. Let's take this little guy out right here. This snake is such a cool animal. The, the nose of this animal is designed for burrowing. I mean, you can look at that snout right there and tell that this animal is designed to dig all through this leaf litter. They are like the, like the Scarlet King Snake. It is a constrictor but its primary food source, what it likes more than anything, are reptile eggs. Now the great thing about this species is, this is an adult right here. So we don't have to worry about the gopher tortoise eggs, but all of these little brown anoles, these exotic brown anoles that shouldn't be here anyways, are gonna be the main food supply for this gorgeous little beauty right here. 
This is an incredible snake species. You know, they just, they're really difficult to get to feed in captivity, which is why you don't see them. Some of the other milk snakes and, and other king snakes do much better than the scarlet snake does in captivity. That's one of the reasons we're not even gonna attempt to keep this animal. It would be a great animal for education to show the difference between the venomous coral snake and the non-venomous scarlet snake. And the scarlet snake actually gets a lot bigger than the scarlet king snake. This is definitely more in the size range of the coral snake. But if you notice that belly right there is nice and clear. Both your coral snake and your scarlet king snake have bands that go all the way around. So these tricolors, the black, the yellow, and the red, go all the way around and circle the snake, where the scarlet snake has this nice white to cream colored belly. So a definite way to tell that this is not the venomous coral snake. So we're gonna go ahead and let this guy go. There's some leaf litter on the ground, a lot of brown anoles running around everywhere. So this guy should have no problem thriving in this area right here. Awesome snake. And there's a nice cabbage frond on the ground right here covered in pine needles and oak leaves, which is a great place for this snake to take shelter, cover, and search for food. So we're gonna go ahead and release him right here. You know, that's one thing that feels really good to me, to be able to release something back into its native environment and let it live out its life. I got a lot of work to do back at the facility, so it's time to head back out. Check this out, we got a turtle on the road here. Oh, it's a gopher tortoise. He's gonna get mashed. So the biggest problem we have right now with this tortoise is they're constantly crossing roadways getting killed all the time. But this guy is coming back and forth across the roadway right here. If you look right over here, this is why. Look, we've got a car coming right now. Make sure the tortoise is off the road. So this tortoise's burrow is right on the side of the roadway here. So this is a young tortoise. We want to see if we can contact Florida Fish and Wildlife and get this tortoise moved. Because if we just push him off the side of the road, he's going to keep coming back to this burrow. And he crosses back and forth two or, three, two or three times a day to get into this burrow right here. So hopefully we can uh, get somebody from Florida Fish and Wildlife who knows what we can do with this tortoise uh, being a protected species and off and forth. Looks like he's headed back to his hole right now. Now, by state and federal law, this is a protected species, so we're not allowed to remove this animal from this location. So I've got a call in to Florida Fish and Wildlife to see if we can get this animal relocated. Because as you can see, I don't want him to head under my truck right here, so I'm going to steer him away. Because he's headed right for his, his gopher hole, which is right off the side of the road right here. You can see where he's excavated this dirt. He's you know dug it all up right here. And now he's cruising right along. The county mowers have actually just mowed this within the last week, so it's a miracle that he, he didn't get mowed over. But uh, going in and out, crossing this road, there's just a really good chance that this little tortoise is going to get run over by the traffic that comes through here. We've got a lot of big rigs, a lot of semis coming through, and uh, we're going to see if Fish and Game can help us out and get this tor tortoise located to another location.
it's time to answer the Python Hunter question of the week. Which of the three tricolored snakes in Florida gets the largest? The answer is C. The venomous eastern coral snake holds the record of 47 and a half inches long. The average size of the eastern coral snake is between 24 and 32 inches long, followed by the Florida scarlet snake with a record of 32 and a quarter inches long, averaging 20 to 24 inches long. The scarlet king snake is the smallest of the tricolored Floridian snakes with a record length of 27 inches long and an average length of 16 to 18 inches long. So here we are back at the site of this gopher tortoise burrow right on the edge of the roadway. And unfortunately, there's just legally nothing we can do to relocate this animal. I've been on the phone with Florida Fish and Wildlife. I've spoken to the regional biologists, the gopher tortoise biologist, their PR division. You know, I mean, we've got these cars flying by here. This tortoise is right on the edge of the roadway. And legally, there's just nothing we can do. Unfortunately, um, you know, part of their habitat are the sides of these roadways and the berm, and there is just not enough manpower to come out, assess every tortoise, and then finding the habitat to locate it or relocate the tortoise to is almost impossible to find. So unfortunately, these tortoises are going to have to fend for themselves. The best we can do is educate the people around us, watch what you're doing when you're driving out there. Most of the locals, they pay attention, and it's rare in this area that I actually see a gopher tortoise strike. But it is possible people traveling through that don't know. One of the other things that we can do, Fish and Wildlife has put out the Florida Gopher Tortoise app that you can go ahead, log on to your smartphone, and help them with the survey to better understand these animals. You could go ahead, take a photograph of the gopher tortoise that you find. When you log into that app and send it to FWC, it plots where that tortoise is. So that's one of the other ways that we can help the gopher tortoise here, at least in Florida. Anybody traveling through or visiting, go ahead and download that app and help be a private scientist to get us more data to save this magnificent species. That'll do it for this episode of the Python Hunter. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And feel free to post a comment down below and let us know what you thought about the show. We'll see you next week. As a pro bike rider, action sports announcer, and off-road adventurer, I'm always on the go. But for my true passion as a reptile breeder, I created my own sanctuary in South Florida, Camp Kennedy. This is ABTV.